Uh, if you recognise that jug, um, if you've bought my book you'll recognise it. And for this tutorial I'm basically going to try and model something like that. Um, I've sped this video up so it's uh, running twice as fast. So to model the jug it took me about an, an hour and a half. Um, and rather than, you, you could do a sketch like a side profile and off graphic view and then import a canvas image um, just by going file import but um, for this I haven't done that I've literally just thought I'd just get some curves and then just kind of uh, work it out within the program because I'd only sketch the lines out anyway so I thought I might as well just do it with the curves but do whatever you um, you feel is best whatever suits you best so I'm just going to keep flicking backwards and forwards between that sketch and the curves and I'm just going to tweak it until it kind of looks the same um, if I was to work on this um, not for just the purpose of a tutorial I'd spend more time doing it but for the sake of the video um, I just thought I'd uh, do it the way I've done it so um, yeah just setting up the curves and basically all I'm going to do is uh, <coughs> I'm going to revolve them to create the profile of the jug the jug being circular and then um, so I'm just in the process I'll just align that curve it's a five degree curve to the bottom and the side and just tweaking that until I'm kind of happy with it the, the difficult part will be where um, I have to work out how I'm going to go about doing the actual spout and the handle so as you can see I keep just uh, doing each straight bit and a curve for every uh, radius I'm just going to play around with these until it kind of looks right proportionally to the sketch but in, in terms of a process um, this would be a backwards and forwards process within the industry anyway where you'd you'd sketch something that you think works in one view, you come to model it and then you'd find oh actually it doesn't quite work. So have a look at it in 3D and go backwards and forwards and you might end up doing the sketch originally and then the model will model it and then you might even use the a screenshot as an underlay to kind of rethink or reassess. So here uh, you have to make sure when you do a revolve that um, the the green pivot points of each curve are at the origin of where you want the, the revolve to be. So I just set the um, origin on those curves back to uh, the center. And then, um, yeah, just using the, the uh, I, I put the segments of the revolve to 60 degrees. So every 60 degrees there'll be a separate surface within the revolve tool. So you can see in the box it says six segments at 60 degrees and the sweep angle is a full 360. So that means I'll have six surfaces to make up a 360 degree profile, as you can see there. And then um, the good thing about that that way of doing it as well, you can uh, set your degree and it maintains curvature based on this, the curves that you've uh, already made. So now, if I was to say I'm happy with that uh, profile of that body of the jug, I'm now thinking, well, okay, how do I go about making this uh, spout? Because it's quite complex when you think about it. Because you've got to come from a rounded body, meet at a point where the water will come out, or whatever fluid's in there. And then uh, how do you blend that in a nice way? Now to do this I actually took, I think it was three attempts of doing it different ways. And basically just tweaking the actual shape of the um, spout because if I was to do it in the sketch it's it's quite uh, the underside of it is quite curved as you can see there whereas that line I've just placed there is quite straight so I was, I was trying to work out what I was to do as a, a simple flat surface and then cut out the profile to make that curved underside but as you'll see in a few minutes um, you end up with a where you've cut it and you've mirrored the other side of it and you've then got to do the, the blend in between to join the left and right side of the uh, spout 
you you end up with some weird surfaces going on um, purely because of the nature of the profile of that surface there so that surface is quite uh, convex which isn't necessarily the same as what was in the actual sketch so as you'll see in a few minutes it will all make sense as to what I'm on about or well, at least I hope it makes sense so at the minute I'm just kind of spinning it around and just seeing does it look right does it look like that sketch and am I achieving kind of what I thought I was trying to achieve within the, the sketch as well so I just mirrored that surface anyway so I can get an idea as to proportions volume and position of that spoke in relation to everything else and I'm just uh, adding the curve now to create the blend and I'm just snapping it up to the edge of those surfaces and then I'm just going to use the align tool on both edges of that curve just align it to that surface same at the bottom and then I'm um, just going to tweak these CVs, pull them out a bit so it's a nicer blend if you will same at the bottom, just tweak that until it looks well, it looks however you want it to look and then we'll see, we'll see what that looks like uh, I'm just going to set these to the necessary degree okay so that required quite a heavy surface for some reason and as you can see with that surface it was flattening off they had that look a flat spot on it so I'm just trying to blend rather than doing the square using just a freeform blend and playing with the um, the lock shape controls and just increasing that value but you'll notice at the bottom it's, it starts to kind of bend inward at that bottom surface there uh, which isn't exactly what I'd want anyway and also if you're trying to remain to this the sketch as you can see that's not um, curved in the, shape, the same way as the sketch anyway so this was attempt one <laughs> and it was a failed attempt so what I'm doing now this curve here I'm just kind of working out where I want the top of the job to be because whatever surfaces I create now will then be trimmed uh, to match that curve so I'm just going to project that curve onto all those surfaces and just trim that so now I'm trying a slightly different approach where I'm going from the side view I'm going from the front on view in relation to the spout and um, just trying to work out in my head what's the best approach for this sort of surface because I'm trying to think like three steps ahead as in whatever form you make you then need to work out wh where the blend needs to be, you need to kind of second guess where the blend's going to be so once you've added a large radius to say that curve and surface you it will eat into either side of that curve so you think well is that going to look right so it's kind of just playing around with it really at the minute and then I've noticed that if I do it as I'm doing on the screen now I've ended up creating a three sided surface area if I was to use those two curves and that curve and surface hence why I've just moved that curve a little bit to create a fourth curve in there however again this as I'm doing this with the curves just doesn't feel like it's the right sort of method to do to achieve the uh, shape I was intended to do in the sketch and now I'm kind of thinking is it worth um, putting that fourth edge at the bottom but again as I'm moving the cursor around, it just doesn't feel right because of where I'm going to have to align that and blend that it's just not going to be it's just not going to work. 
can't remember how long I spent doing this approach. Yeah, not very long. <laughs> I kind of gave up on that. So that's approach two, and it clearly just didn't work for what I had in my head. So now approach, I'm trying to keep the lines parallel to each other in each view and I'm basically I'm going to create that surface now. Um, and I'm just going to make that above the, the finished surface point because I've got to trim it anyway. And the main thing I want to get at the minute is a surface that mimics the sketch and also um, has a nice flow to the surface as well. So you can tell it's kind of a concave surface, which is what this sketch initially showed. But it's um, how do we go from here? Is what's going through my mind as I was doing this at the minute, and there was a few issues doing this way um, with this the kind of middle piece connecting when I mirrored it. So in a minute I'll mirror it. Okay, so yeah, now that gap in between causes all kinds of issues. Because at the minute, if I have to do that as I've just done that there on screen, it's not curved like it is in a sketch, it's straight. So, I think in a minute I'll just kind of refer to the sketch again as well. I'm just going to change that to a three degree. And I think this is the curve I'm going to use to trim. So I'm adding that curve now to those initial fairly simple surfaces. But as you'll see in a moment, once I've trimmed them, because it's gone onto a, a convex. A concave surface and I've trimmed it out you then you have this tapering effect of that that distance between each surface so you end up with a bowed blend now as you can see you want to put it into rendered mode and sort out the, uh, the tolerance and the draw precision of the actual viewport you can see it's a uh, it's not a great surface because it's blending equally from each edge, but the distance between those two edges is tapering. Hence the flat spot, which is the dark shaded side of it. So, I want to keep that curve in this view, which is Y, but in the X view, uh, the X axis, you can see I want to avoid doing what's happening there. Now this was, the kind of where it got to and this was the approach I thought well okay I'm gonna to have to rebuild this but I'm gonna to have to control that edge in the middle. At the minute I think, I think I was trying to do it with a square before getting to that um, final resolved idea. I was trying to do it with a square and trying to manipulate the surface manually rather than using a freeform blend. But, as you'll see in a minute, it doesn't help. So just tweak those settings until you get the tolerance that you want, or your curvature. And then again, I mean, that looks better than the actual blend. But then you, you still get a massive flat spot. So it clearly wasn't good enough so far, okay. I need to rethink this. So just delete those and just start from scratch. And it's so now I'm starting to think, okay, I want to control 
the distance between those across that mirrored line. So hence why I'll just move that bottom C beads across and we'll try that. So you can see it comes in at the bottom. Just tweaking the uh, the concave surface on that view as well. And then again, if I just project and trim onto there. Let's just see what that looks like. I'm going to mirror that. I'm still getting that, that bowing in that gap. So it's getting wider in the middle and tapering to a point in the, the ends, which isn't what you want. So I've just done a new curve from the start and end point. I'm just going to delete those surfaces and then that curve that I just created, that one there, Therefore, I'm going to make the bottom concave, uh, concave the same as the top profile, so those boundaries match. And then this one, this time, get a little bit more control. But therefore, okay, let's let's curve this now rather than doing a flat surface and trimming it. Let's just put it so it's the way I want it to be within. X and Y and Z. So and then I just trimmed on from the top view so we've got that same crop top. And now you can see the difference by creating that boundary manually rather than doing a surface and then trimming it. I've controlled the fact that that taper, that bowing in the middle has gone and now it is dependent on whatever that curve I've created and then at this point I was happy as how that's turned out in terms of the, uh, the surface going into the main body of the jug so you can see I've, I've always done the surface so it's gone straight through the actual side surfaces of the jug and then I've used the intersect tool to uh, intersect it with the, the jug itself and then trimmed using the trim tool which is what just happened just and now now I need to think about okay um, how do we go about doing the blend but for the purpose of the blend I'm going to split that front that that surface there I'm going to split it into two so when it comes to filleting as you can see I've split that now two two separate surfaces when it comes to filleting, I'm only filleting two surfaces against the one surface. Otherwise you'll have a, a weird start and end point and it might go a bit weird. And I've done a variable fillet and I'm just going to play around with the dimensions now. Because where the bottom of that spout meets the side of the surface, you can see it's a really small radius and at the minute it's set to one mil, one millimeter. Um, and at the top I've got a lot of room to kind of add so I'm going to do a tapered one and I'm going to just play around with the size of that fillet and so if you click on the actual white line there uh, you can change the size and then when you click on that will change so when you click on that curve there and you change that, that white line allows you to change the size by typing in a value and then if you click on the blue bit, you can type in between 0 and 1. 0 being one end of the uh, fillet, as in the start or the end. So you can see it says 1 and a 0 in blue floating around that fillet. If you were to type in 0 0.5, it would be in the middle of that actual fillet. And now I'm just going to play around with um, the values and the... Um, flow controls so edge align extend or default to try and get the best blend and then if need be I can always trim it later on because you see there's, there's kind of a weird thing happening in there and it's because it's 
the bottom of that spoke is so small a radius. Like if you've got a, a one mil radius there, you can't get a two mil radius around it, so it has to be a smaller value. So in this case, I'm playing around with the size of that bottom value and that fillet. Hope that makes sense. Um, whereas at the top, I can just add as much as I want. Yeah, so if you've got a, say if you've got a box and you've put a one millimeter radius around all the corners, you then can't add another radius to a certain area that's bigger than that one mil. Because if you've got a five mil, it won't go around a one mil rad. It'll have to be smaller than the one mil rad. So you always do your, your largest radiuses you do first. I think that, I hope that makes sense. Hence why that bottom of that spout is such a small radius. So what I've done, I've just deleted the, the left hand side and this right hand side, I'm just going to mirror it. Once I've got to a point that I'm happy with and I'm just going to check what it looks like. See if it looks about right. See if I'm happy with it. And then the multicolored patch, you can see where all the different surfaces that have been created to create that. So it's kind of getting there. And now I'm going to leave the spoke now and then I'm just going to try and work out how to do this uh, handle. So I've got to have the outside surface and the inside surface. So at the minute I'm just kind of manually offsetting the curves and positioning them where I think they should be based on the sketch. And at the minute, as you can see, they're just on a the uh, X, uh, is it XY or no, sorry, YZ uh, plane. So once I've got them positioned in that one orthographic view, I'll then move them out and kind of position them where I think they need to be in three dimensions. But what I want to do now is I want to project onto the middle surface, which I selected just that surface there. I want to project a curve. So that curve and surface gives me a point of reference and something to align to. So that curve I just created there can now be aligned to those curves and surface. I'm just going to, same process, move the curve and then uh, create a curve in the middle to create the, the blend of the rad. You could just do two surfaces that are flat and then meet up and then fill it the surfaces, but when it's not a, an equal radi surface, uh, it's just easy to do it with the curves because you can just get it exactly how you want it to be. So this, what I'm doing now, is intended to be the in, the external surface of the handle. So the part that sits against your palm of your hand. And then your fingers will wrap around this. So I'm just adding a bit of curvature to it. And yeah, now I'm currently just thinking about how that flows into the bottom. And same process again, so going to project some curves and surface so I've got something to snap and align to. Just get them to a point where I think they're a little bit right. And then I'm just basically scaled that from its uh, pivot point and then projected that on there. So I'll then just either delete the, cur the history of that curve so, or I'll just delete the curve altogether. I'll just redo that curve. But that blue line on that surface now is, it'll always be there for me to align to now. So, with that being a five degree curve, I can align that. But as I was doing this, I was thinking I actually don't want that to be a five degree curve. So 
So what I'm doing at the minute, it just looks like I'm spinning aimlessly, but I'm actually looking at see what that curve is doing in three dimensions. So what does that curve bend in X, Y, and Z? Um, and then what I'm doing now is manipulating that CV that's aligned to the surface. What effect does that have on the curve as I move that? And then that intended blend I've just aligned, I've aligned that to the what will be the surface of the handle and that curve. So by manipulating these CVs, you can see in 3D space what what that bo that bottom radius is doing. And once I'm happy with that, I will then just simply mirror the curves once I'm happy with them. So, I just deleted that surface on the right and then I've just mirrored this uh, near side surface just so it's got the, the same curves and surface. Um, you could just project the same curves onto the the other side but because I've deleted curves and whatever it was just easy to just mirror that surface and then I'm just going to create a square in that gap there so using those curves that I've just done that surface you can see now that intersects quite nicely and uh, that's all fine because then we'll trim it out afterwards and then this is the flat side where your fingers will wrap it round and And once, you, once your curves are in a good state and you've put a lot of work into the curves, you'll see that the surfaces just they're really easy to they come together quite nicely with very little issues. So as long as you spend the time making sure your curves are good, um, Alice is quite happy to do whatever it is you want to do. So there's no issues with those. That's pretty quickly gone in, and just see what that looks like. Now I'm going to project a curve on surface in the X view onto the exterior of the handle, so the curve section which is convex. And the reason for that is it gives me a curve to align to the top side of the handle, which will all become clear in a moment. I'm just going to do that on both so, uh, both X. I think it's X Y. X Z. So yeah, I just made that curve and just projected it onto the same surface. So I've got those two projected curves on left and right of that handle. And the same as the bottom section of this handle, I'm going to do the same again. So using a three degree curve, I'm just going to ma manipulate this curve until it looks about right. In X, Y, and Z. So what I'm doing now, I'm moving it in one direction, but because of the alignment to the surface, it snaps, which is what that kind of weird snapping th thing was. And you'll notice that when you start to do it, it will just kind of, you'll move it and it will snap so it remains in curvature. Same again with this bit here. I noticed I've just done that as a straight line and that I didn't actually align it to the uh, surface of the jug. So to redo that. And you can see how that the curvature of that curve coming off the side of the jug going into the handle, what effect that has on this, what will be the rad or the fillet. So the curve I'm manipulating at the minute, I want to be almost straight once it passes tangency of the actual jug side just so there's a really nice crisp straight line if it was wonky the surface it's, that builds off it would be wonky and it just looked wrong so again yeah just keep spinning aimlessly checking that the curve looks right 
if these curves were wonky you would you would see in the surface it would just look terrible. And again as I said in previous tutorials that this the most minute adjustment to these curves makes a massive difference to a surface. And it is worth spending time on. And because this is quite complex because it's inside and outside of the handle going into I spent quite a lot of time kind of just playing around with these curves. And then the same process for the top, so create a square that will intersect with that body side. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Initially it looks pretty decent. No, it's just kind of um, if you're happy with those surfaces, you then just kind of create the side of the handle. <gasps> and because of all the hard work you put into the curves, there's no issues whatsoever with the handle. Um, no fussy bits, so uh, all that hard work paid off. Now to do the bottom side, same process but upside down. So again, just go for the process of recreating those curves again. I just copy and pasted the, the curve above that and dragged it down and then I'll just realign that. Um, and I'm just going to adjust the thickness of this. So I've just moved the curve that's projected onto that surface and I'm just going to basically redo that. Once I think the curve looks right, as I said, the rest is so much easier. So, And I'm just going to add a little bit of curvature to that bottom edge. It's almost to the point where you can't even see it, so it's probably even pointless, but it made me feel better doing it. So, anyway. So, now that's going to taper into that middle section of the handle, as we did with the top. Tweak those CVs wherever you think necessary to get them to look right. And now, same as we did with the top, just uh, correct the sides of the handle. And then I can just mirror those surfaces over. That's the handle pretty much done. If you were to add radiuses to these, once you, you've finished the basic surfaces, use the uh, tubular offset 
and it will just kind of make a tube go around all the edges that you want to be radius and then intersect the tube with all your surfaces get rid of the bits you don't want and then blend from each edge to another and then you just delete the, the tube afterwards or turn onto a different layer so you get rid of the tube but the tube creates the size of the fillet that you want so you'd set the tube to be like I don't know, 5mm or whatever and then you do just blend the gap if you want to add a fillet fill it to your um, edges. So the minute what I'm doing here anyway is uh, just intersecting and trimming and projecting and cutting away all the bits that I don't need and at this point I'm thinking should I do the the negatives and the internal surfaces of the actual jug. Um, I did debate ending it here but uh, I soldiered on and carried on so in a moment I'll just uh, think about doing the internal surfaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste these curves and I'm just going to drag the all three of them up so I know that that bottom edge is always flat and then I'm just going to adjust the two left hand sides to suit. So. You could offset the surfaces, but sometimes the surfaces, because you offset them either left or right, they, the intersections don't remain the same, so you have to kind of redo it anyway and project and trim. So I just find it's easy if you if you kind of redo the curves and then just do it manually. I often find it's easier. And so here again, I'm just kind of offset that original surface but I'll again I'll just make it so what I'm doing in a minute there's a lot of curves to to look at and it's a bit confusing so I'm going to get rid of all the curves I don't want and basically create a new layer and I'm going to assign them to a new layer so they're just turned off basically so if I need them they're there and I can turn them back on but for now I only want these few curves just so it's less to look at it's just easier to see what you're doing So, although because it's you're offsetting something that's got quite a small radius and stuff, it's I'm having to tweak these regardless anyway. Like if you were to do a simple surface offset, it wouldn't work anyway because of where the the, the radius would be so small in that inside anyway. So once you've you've uh, tweaked and redone those curves, I'm just going to do the same process as I did for the the exterior surfaces and so that's just basically create the first one mirror it and then blend between the two and then I'm going to select all those surfaces and then just use the same curve to project and trim for the, the very top edge of the actual uh, jug so I think what I did there I actually uh, projected it in the wrong view because I'd left the default in a different view so rather than projecting it in Y which I thought it was going to do it projected it on X or something so basically let's redo that again yeah so and then now I should just be able to select those and just trim discard all that Uh, I've ended up like, I think somehow it's ma I managed to keep the wrong side of that. I don't know how I managed to do that. Just redo that trim surface, it's fine. So, all that done. I then, same process as before, I select those surfaces and intersect them with the, the internal surfaces of the jug. And just delete and keep wherever necessary. And that gives me that. And then I want to add um, the fillet to the internal surface. So I'm just going to save this file. 
before I do anything, just in case anything goes wrong, because it has a tendency to keel over when it gets a bit complicated. So at the minute, I just realised I've got three surfaces, I'm trying to fill it around two surfaces, and I'll have to have a, an end start and a middle, and it'll be too complicated. So I've got to split that um, surface in the middle there, that surface, I'm just going to split it, same as we did with the front. It will just make life so much easier when it comes to doing this fillet. So I've just deleted those surfaces because I'm going to do it on one side and then just mirror it. And again, yeah, just going to make sure everything is the way I want it to be in terms of the flow control of the fillet. And then again, same as before, just going to um, play around with that radius. So now it's getting really small, so half a mil, and it's quite happy. Going up to, I think I said it's 13 mil or something. So that white bit, slip, click on that and then you can type in a value. And then 12 mil I've set that to. But reset that end to uh, 0.5. So I'm going from half mil to 12 mil radius, I believe. And that looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that, and you can see how many surfaces that's created. So I'm just going to select all those surfaces and then mirror. And I forgot to select the actual inside of the jug, so select that surface, mirror that one as well. Everything's well, everything's good, and now I'm just going to where because this. That handle is part of the jug and just uh, trimming the exterior surfaces. So if you were to go inside you'd be able to, if you can imagine, you'd be able to walk all the way through the handle into the internal volume of the actual um, jug. So those two surfaces are just deleted there. You can see there's actually a hole in there. That kind of makes sense. That view there kind of explains what I'm trying to say basically. So if you were small enough to be inside the volume of the actual material, you'd be able to walk all the way around. And then, yep, just mirror those surfaces over. That should be good. And now it's just a case of uh, filling those holes there you now to create the top edge of the actual uh, jug. So I always do one surface, leave the gap, and then do another surface, and then the one that's got the gap, I'll have curvature aligned to the um, adjacent edges, just so you know it's uh, a good surface all the way around. And everything seems to be happy with that, which is good. Never normally goes this, this smoothly, so I was quite surprised. Now here, because I've split those those uh, blends on the actual um, spout, I'll have to create this manually. So boundary two, I'm going to set to tang uh, implied tangent, not impl yeah, implied tangent, and then the that gives me curvature on the other side of it. Happy days. So that's all good. Again, I only have to do one side and then I can just mirror it, so I'm just going to do this side now. And this is where um, you get quite a few surfaces in this area here, because of the intersections and the way it was built. So as you can see, there's, as in the previous tutorials, you always want to have a four-sided surface. So I need to project and trim a curve onto that top surface there, so I know exactly where the middle is. And then... That gives me a curving surface plus the internal surface is separated in the middle anyway. So that gives me two points to snap that curve to. And that creates a nice surface there.
there a fellow here there's actually six or five sides there so I need to create two surfaces in that gap so that's how small that surface is going to be but I'll do that one last I'll do the big surface first make sure that's exactly how I want it to be and then that small surface I'll just have curved on both sides uh, or in this case I've used a blend and then I should then just be able to pick those surfaces and just mirror them over and then that is it like I say if you were to use a tubular offset tool you can select an edge and then run a tube all along that edge and then that tube that's created you can then um, use that to intersect with uh, the, the surfaces to create a hole and then get rid of the tube and then trim the surfaces where necessary so you end up with a hole and then for the filleted edges you can just use a blend then um, but I'll leave you to play around with that and I hope that was useful and I hope that helps on a more product design sort of point of view rather than car design point of view Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Cheers.